Okay, thanks for waiting. Uh, you know, if you're wondering why we're taking so long, we're on poetry time. It's always usually like five to ten minutes later than actual time, you know, to give us opportunity to examine the sky, the clouds, the bushes, uh, whatever it is that we are interested in. Um, so thanks for coming to the Lightning Leader Series. Um, I want to thank the Long Beach City College uh, Foundation. They're the ones that provide a lot of the funds in which it uh, gives us the opportunity to have readings, to have acclaimed published authors here on campus. Um, I want to ask you to please silence your phones uh, while the reading is going on. Uh, that's helpful that we don't get disrupted by the new phone. Um, Rachel Kahn is a spoken word poet, a story, uh, short story uh, writer, and self-described modern-day mystic. We'll find out a little bit more about that. Um, her poetry has been featured on Morning Becomes Eclectic on NPR and as the, uh, as the Weather on the podcast Phenomenon. Welcome to Night Tale. She has been published in journals such as Eclipse, Perm Frost, Co Review, among others. Her work has also been anthologized in a poet's Pedaga. Agada, Word Warriors, His Rib, and Knocking at the Door. She has three spoken word albums, The Upward Spiral, Ptolemaic uh, Complex, and Word to the Wise. Her poetry and short fiction collection, Ten for Everything, was published by Orange Ocean Press. And her latest poetry collection, The Prayer on Behalf of the Broken Heart, was recently published by Finishing Line Press. Uh, there are two books here available for you to purchase. If you would like, to, Rachel would love to sign them for you, I'm sure, afterwards. Her work has received uh, accolades from the Rabbit Heart Foundation Film Festival, Writer's Digest Short Story Awards, and LA Weekly Awards, among others. Please help me give a warm welcome to Rachel Kahn. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming and spending your precious time listening to poetry in the middle of the day. I think some of you it's required, but I'm still grateful. <laughs> Do you, so this mic is now, is we don't need it, right? No, because I have a body mic on. It's very oh, profesh. Yeah. Thank you, Trevor. I'm going to move. I'll move it in a sec. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jerome. And who's over at the bookstore? I didn't get his name. What's oh, your Reed. name? Reed? Yep. Hi, Reed. Thanks, Reed. Hey, no problem. Thank you all for being here, and thanks to Natalie, who's not here, but is took care of me being here. And if any of you know Mariah Summers, she also teaches here and she is the, the person who brought me here. Come on in, come on in, come relax. Hi, we're just chilling. I'm Rachel. How are you guys? What's your name? Jamil. Jamil? Nice. Wait, Jamal or Jamil? I want to respect it. Jamil. Jamil, nice to meet you. Do you like poetry or are you forced to be here? Uh, I just randomly <laughs> here. Yes, just randomly right now? Yes. We're doing a poetry reading. It's good that you like poetry. Do you like mermaids? OK, yeah. amazing. I'm going to start, since you like mermaids, with a poem called Mermaid Esther. Anyone else like mermaids? You like mermaids, right? I know. I don't know why I knew that. I knew that from the back of the room. You like mermaids. They're so pretty. Can you guys turn your ringers off? Unless you're. Oh, so Even though Jeff already asked you, but Jamil just came in, you know? But thank you. Yeah, like you might be a doctor, you know what I mean? You might have a baby to deliver. You need to have it on vibrate, understand. Important things happen. Thank you all really, really for being here. This is Mermaid Esther. I don't need this. I feel like I'm awkwardly. <laughs> Hold on there, Mermaid Esther. Don't forget. Your skill set has been custom built. This is what you were born for. You've got this. I promise that this discontent is divine, despite the pain you're swimming in. Although you're going under, sister, there will be no drowning today. Dive unfathomable fathoms deeper. Rather than looking for loopholes, fashion a life raft from the strands of your very real suffering. Do not be deceived. This misery is no doled out punishment from on high. It is a knock 
at the door of your heart from inside. Your soul is an imprisoned star fishing for clemency. Let the gate swing, throw it open. You are built of double helixes, a swirling evolutionary journey. This life is a spiraling tide pool. The view of glorious sun will spin round to the dark side of the moon as it is bound to do with every revolution. I call on you to remember you. Back before you became your own wet metaphor, that innocent kid who turned cartwheels naked, shameless, and pure. That wild girl who walked into the ocean, delighting in the cold bite. The dreamer who believed in infinity's limitless possibility. Remember when you could clearly see the truth of what was muddying the grown-ups all around you? How you'd watch them rationalize, tell themselves lies, overcomplicate, bury their pain, only to inevitably explode in the most inappropriate, dangerous, and unrelated of ways over and over again? Remember the self-sworn oath, your vow to never let that be you? There's no roundabout route to salvation. The only way out is through. Don't confuse husk with vessel, lest you self-immolate, subsumed in ocean, while an astonishing fire blazes within. You must spill forth this light or be consumed from inside. This is the sacred act of spark extraction. This is returning to the knowing in your bones. No more ignoring your internal warning system. No more denying inner guidance. No more collapsing under the depth charge of confusion. Sister Mermaid Esther, gather all the flooding love that spilled in surging waves from every single heartbreak. Return it to the heart home of your ribs, interstitial glow flowing out from within. Toward the shore, there is a lighthouse of a little girl, sturdy-legged, faithful, and patient, beaming rhythm-encoded messages to you. Swim up to the glimmering surface. Break through. Thank you. Thanks. So it's funny. I like that you, Jeff, you're like, what? She calls herself a mystic. What does that mean? Let's see. Prove it. I like that. <laughs> but it's funny. I never, you know, no one's ever called me to the mat on that. I didn't write it. I hate writing my own bios. I'll come to it's so ox to talk about yourself in third person. So weird. But I actually have a good definition now. Have you guys heard of Jordan Peterson? He's like kind of, anyone? Jordan? Yeah. yeah? So he's kind of a firebrand. I'm not even sure how I feel about him right at this moment. You'll check him out. He's an interesting kind of modern day philosopher. He's in Canada. So what, I'm not co-signing on him. Just like if you go, wait, this guy what? I'm not co-signing, I'm interested, I'm curious what he's exploring, but I was listening to him recently and he said, a regular person, a muggle, is somebody who identifies with the knowable. A mystic is a person who identifies with the unknowable. And I was like, that pretty much nails it. It's very unpretentious, right? It's like, oh, I'm a freaking wizard. What? No. I mean, it's just that what doesn't make sense to me calls me more deeply than what does. Anybody feel me? Do they need oh, look at all these mystics in the house. Well, I mean, they, I mean, it's it's Jordan. It's not me. But does anybody relate? Do I have any other mystics? Yes. They're, they're solemn, nodding mystics. But they're letting me know. I see they're my mystics out there. The no, no, not these ones. That's the whole point. 
The muggles are afraid of the unknown and identify with the knowable. The mystics identify with the unknowable and they all told me very clearly who they are. They just, awesome. yeah, yeah, I see you. It's mostly ladies, not all. It's usually like that. So another book that we have for sale here, I'm so grateful that Reed and everyone in the bookstore brought it. I'm gonna share this with you right now. This is, okay, bye. Did you have fun? You like mermaids? Yeah. Okay, great to meet you, Jamil. Have a beautiful rest of your day. You too. This is my children's book. Does anyone here like children's books? Yeah. Like Shel Silverstein, anyone? Uh, yeah. yeah, me too. Like the best, right? Dr. Seuss, anyone? So this is here for sale and I really, um, I wanna share it with you. And the art is bananas, so I'm gonna share that with you too. And just like read it to you like we're freaking little kids hanging out, you know what I mean? Cause can you guys see? Amazing, right? I think I know, if I mess up the words and you're looking at the words, don't judge me. That's a lot of pressure, you know? I might say a word out of order or something. I've got a surprise for you. It's a secret, but you can tell everyone. You sparkle inside. There is magic glowing light coming out of you. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. Just the way you are. I've got another secret, oh wait, see? I want to tell you another secret that you can tell everyone. You might not know it, but it's true. You are made out of atoms, which are tiny chunks of stuff, and that's what stars are made out of too. Even the farthest star you can see is built of the same atoms as you. You are made up of star stuff. Isn't that cool? Aren't you lucky? And guess what? It's not just us and stars. Everything is the same. Trees, the mysterious moon, this little goldfish, the ocean too. I just love this artist, right? I'll tell you how I met her in a sec. Pizza. Mm -hmm. That's the kid's favorite page too. And that green kazoo. Everything you can think of plus you is made of star stuff. Some people don't want to remind you that you sparkle inside. Some people don't want your special light to shine. That's just because they've forgotten or somebody taught them not to remember, remember that they are all sparkly inside too, just like you. And it's scary for people whose sparkle is secret to see it coming out of you. Don't let them get you down. They'll figure it out soon enough. Or maybe they won't. Some people never remember the sparkle. But that doesn't change that they do. And that doesn't change what you have to do which is to continue to let your magic, special, happy, unique, beautiful light shine all the time, just by being you, because we all want to see it or feel it. And I am glad that you are here because seeing you reminds me that I sparkle too. Yay, the end. Being called with the artist. Well, I mean, really, it doesn't, I hope you don't feel pandered to. I like kids' books better than grown-up books, and I mean, that's really it. That's my jam. That's my message, right? So, like, a mystic is into science. I mean, undeniable, right? We're made out of stars. What else can I say about it? Who here, you saw, did everyone here see Out? Are they all your students, Jeff? Not all of them. Some of them did, yeah. I feel like not doing it so you don't have to, we don't have to waste time with repeats. Um, this is a, my very newest piece that I'm, I'm excited to share with you. So now I am using the pods. Um, yeah. It's called Kindness, the Murmuration of Starlings. Have you heard of murmuration? Listen, it's breathtaking. Google it, but like, later 
It's basically bird flocking quantified to the awesome th power. It's starlings communing through flying and swirling like one transcendent entity. They move in a fluid choreographic flux on the constant edge of next shift, next shift, next shift, and each of these shifts is called a critical transition, a murmuration of thousands of starlings tuned into each other's movements through the phenomenon of scale-free correlation, following neighboring velocities, each bird affecting the next seven birds nearest to them, and the next seven, and the next seven. Look. Even Charles Darwin said survival of the fittest was a misapprehension of his findings. Even he believed in the holistic, was awed by the elaborate and elegant interdependence of nature. From abiogenesis all the way to present day, from subatomic particles to the entire biosphere, it's emergence that encourages evolution. Kill or be killed is a lie of the mind, an, outdi an outdated paradigm, a flak jacket that can't keep out light. Let us take flight toward our final destination of wild and untamable kindness. The voyage is long and travels forward and backward in time. It's a bumpy ride, but the upshot is we can't not try. I'm talking directly to the tiny little you who lives inside of you, reminding you of all the truth you once knew you knew implicitly, returning you to your previous innocence, restoring your clarity, because kindness is your true nature, and I promise anything beyond that has been inculcated. Truthfully, separation itself is an illusion, double brewed in the hateful culture stew of roiling cruelty we have all been cooking in. And despite the desire to stay in denial, it's bubbling up to the surface. What I'm saying is, there's way more work for us to do. Don't get lulled into complacency by the fact that you feel compassion. Kindness is action. Not just that. As a matter of fact, kindness is actually a radical act in this hard scrabble and roughshod crapshoot sneak attack of a life spilling with inner demons and double dealings. Kindness transcends mere feelings. It digs in the dirt, is braver than hurled insults, is rebellious enough to be vulnerable, is vulnerable enough to rebel, is confident enough to be patient, calls forth the great recalibration, an attunement to the taste of sweetness that starts within. If you're currently in life's trenches, please get this. Kindness is your weapon, your best defense, your greatest defiance, this ain't rocket science. I don't care what your tribe is. The surprise is that kindness does not equal weakness. Actually, it's meanness that requires an Achilles heel to sting. Do not be deceived. Meanness preys on your insecurity, offers false surety, walls off and masks, distracts from the little voice inside that's calling for acknowledgement, is needful of healing. All of this neglect an emotional starvation based on pattern repetition so ancient it's tread raw and bloody crop circles upon your throbbing heart. Behind every protective wall of defensiveness is a frightened child fearing for their very life. Do not withhold the kindness that is longing to flow through you. Give it away now. Be brave enough to topple your facades. Repurpose them as bridges. Span the divisions. Once you've been on the brink, stared into the abyss, no matter the flavor of your personal chasm of darkness, kindness becomes your soul's own prerequisite. Once you've been to the bottom, you can recognize salvation in simplicity the merciful intoxication from the swoon perfume of orange blossoms, the awe possible from a sky ablaze with the murmuration of starlings, the heart-rending generosity of unguarded eye contact. 
This injurious journey is filled with hair-triggered, human-ticking trauma bombs who only want love in a way they can understand it, waiting for someone to say, show me where it hurts, and then give them the chance to answer. Do not withhold the kindness that is longing to flow through you. In this very moment, you can choose to say yes. You could remember gentleness, even toward you, even though you like it rough, even though life's made you tough. You could choose to stop all the naysaying. Who are you to discourage anyone, yourself very much included? You could choose to be grace you could choose the alchemy that awaits your bravery. Spin your entire existence into endless golden thread. In this very moment, you could choose to say yes. You could put your hand on your chest, on your heart, on your throat, on your cheek, you could let that little voice within you speak, and this time, you could listen. Give yourself the gift of presence. In this very moment, you could choose to say yes. Let this newfound gift of presence, warm like caramel taffy in your hands, let it expand wider to encompass the person in front of you, behind you, to each side of you, the seven people closest to you, and the next seven, and the next, then this whole gallery, then this whole building. You could let it grow in your inclusion, past human, past all blooming, past every last murmuration of starlings, until your soul is a whole swarm of moonbeams filling the universe with your unique, super sweet, and deeply needed illumination. Thank you. I'm like so hot, you guys, sorry. It's like so awkward. But I like, thanks for clapping. Are you guys warm? It's just me. You have a sweatshirt on. Mermaid. You're warm. But you guys have hoodies on. I have no sympathy. I'm really kind of beaten up all the fans. It's okay, darling. I have like 10 more minutes. You're so okay. sweet, Trevor. I'm just acknowledging so they're not like, is she coming off coke or something? I feel like it's, you know, like I'm <laughs> really weird. But you guys look a little sweaty too, actually. I don't feel that bad. It's really hard to move the energy through you of poetry. You know what I mean? So just kind of acknowledging it. No baby Jane mascara vibes, that's good. Well, I mean, look, we're human. I'm like having a human experience right in front of you. So embarrassing and humbling and awkward, like not so different from peeing my pants right now, you know? Just like fluid coming out of me. Just being human together, right? What can we do? Um, so those of you who heard out, it's from my CD, which I also have available. And if you're like, CD, <laughs> girl. I also have downloads. You can just, it's like a sticker and an album download code on the back. But some people still have CD players in their car. I have all the options for you. If that is something that you would like to get your hands on. If you like, like um, electronica music, you might like it. It has beats in the background by an amazing producer named Jazz One. So if that's your jam, I'll even let you listen to it before you buy it if you want. I'm going to do the title poem from this book, A Prayer on Behalf of the Broken Heart, which the bookstore is so kind as to bring today. Have mercy on the broken heart. She is in a dark tunnel while you tread sunlight. Stand in awe of her utter humility. She does not want your pity. She is a self-winding watch worn on the wrist of the infinite. Note how the hours continue to go, no matter the heaviness in her chest, 
as the almighty arm sways. Her mainspring rides the bridle, her chariot swings low. She calls to you across time space, invoking son of what's his name? Daughter of so-and-so? She wants to be the looking glass you fall through. She wants to be the depths you swim to. Blindfolded and cave-bound, hollering Marco to no polo. She is relentless, resplendent in her faith that the answer will arrive. She is ceaseless, wild and measured at once. She is the antidote. Bear witness to her outstanding and unfathomable stamina. In the face of total lack of reciprocity, she keeps pattering iambic through 1,000 days of oxygenless drought. She is a bottomless top shelf gimlet. She is built of bloody bruised knuckles. She knows the secret of God. I defy you to name another love more steadfast, despite being unrequited. Thank you. Okay. So according to the, the sketch, we don't even have that much more time. And do like a few little bitty more poems for you. How are you guys doing? Like we get to talk and stuff and then we'll hang out and talk. It's so good to see you. Thanks for coming, you guys. So nice. You, remember we met at the gallery. Yeah. It's so nice yeah. that you're here, yeah. So, oh, you're literally in the class. Just, that's amazing. With Jeff? Yes. So you saw out and you're like, I know that chicky. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. Yay, Long Beach. Um, do you guys all know that you're literally moonbeams? You get that? Mm -hmm. My mystics are like so smiling and nodding at me. I'm so glad you like called me out on that, Jeff, because this is like really exciting. I'm learning about telepathy right now. Or just eye contact. Maybe it's just intuition. Intuition is not really magic, right? Is it? Inner guidance? Not really magic, right? We all have it. We're just shut down from it. This is called dancing lessons. Five. For once, this is easier done than said but only because it is unsayable, unnameable, outside languages, latitudes, beyond words, jurisdiction. Allow this. Six, collect all of your suffering, all the discomfort in your own skin, belligerent self-criticism, pain and frustration, righteous resistance to iniquity, your distrust of self and others, every nagging memory. Do not muck around in it. The trick is simple acknowledgement. Then, offer it up. Hollowed out now. Breathe now. There is room for the sound to infuse you. Rhythm emanating up through the earth, soles of your feet. Seven. Remember when you were very small in a very big room? You were consumed by the music, spinning and jumping. You let loose. You were overtaken, your face in abject, blissful expression. And then you felt it happening sidestepped into observation. You shut down the sensation, swallowed the smile whole. This is the part where your mind wants to fight you. I promise that it will be worth the struggle. I've yet to have anyone regret passing through this gate. Shame is a stubborn lock. Pick it anyway. The combination is inconsequential where we are headed. Kick in the door if you must. Bust. Turn away from your reflection, expectation, 
self-perception. Know the glory of your physical instrument, the infinite wisdom, the way your hips want to unfold in golden meaning, and your sternum wants to lead, and your head wants to throw back. Know your sweetness, your purity, your innocence. Know that this is more than permitted. Eight. All that is left, ineffable. Thank you. So, I have three more minutes. I'll leave you with one last little prayer. Non-sectarian, non atomic, made-for-everyone prayer. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And then like we can talk, we can hang out. If you guys have questions, do you guys have questions? Do you want to talk about anything? Cool, amazing, because I want to talk to you guys too. Restore I, me, us, we, to my, our natural state. Remind I, me, us, we, that all we actually do is vibrate. Mystic atomic shifts, shiny shattered shards, peeling off clipote, sparks of willingness, beautiful bits of potential. Allow us to transcend these fleshly packages, these sweet and frail, beautiful body beings that are no more and no less than slowed light. Right the wrongs inside us with your gentle correction. Let us be pliant and guided, spirits undivided, aligned with rightness, joy, and harmony. Permit our distinct uniqueness to slip into perfect union with one another. Seven billion snowflakes clicking into sacred mosaic unmelted, unmelded, undeniable in all its diversified glory, each piece definite and desperately necessary, falling like a lock full of tumblers, kissed by your key of divinity, press against us, hit the sweet spot where we need it with your sanctified kiss, your infinite soothing loveliness, your whisper wing of prettiness, lure us to you. Reel us in. Begin the holy reparation that will unfold if and only if we awaken. We stand before you, naked in your garden, wandering through parties. Behold our cracked open hearts. We return, orbiting back. Let the linear continuum of time-space reach its event horizon at long last. Let the past Kiss the future in the hallowed present moment. Let us finally reach the finishing line of this human race. Let us step into grace and amazement as we curve in on ourselves, spiraling. Hold us in your loving womb. Enfold us in your circle of tsum Let the sacred feminine rise. Let Miriam clap her tambourine. Let us join hands and evolve, revolving into spherical reality. Let us in. Let us begin. Face to face. Panim al panim, as we waltz into your sea of reeds, as we heliotrope into your big bright radiance, as we sing unto thee in present tense. Let us in. Let us begin. Let us all rise. Let us be worthy. Let it be time. Let the sparks fly. Let us make ourselves into vessels unbreakable so that we may receive your everything. Let there be light. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, Trevor.
after all, Reed, and all of you for hanging out with me on like your lunch time, really, right? You guys want to ask, okay, pray on time, exactly 30 minutes. You guys have any questions? Do you want to chat about anything? Yeah, go ahead. So what made you become a mystic? Like, how did you view life that way? I don't think I became one. I just always have been one. I think it's because I, well, you know what? Let me go back. Hi, you're, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, my thank great pleasure. Much. Thank you so much. So it actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rescind my answer and go back. I have narcolepsy, and I was almost completely deaf until I was five from severe ear infections. So when I was born, you know, they check your sight and your hearing when you're a baby. Everything was solid. But from repeated and repeated severe ear infections, by the time I was five, I was about 80% deaf. But it went undiagnosed because when they, they had checked my hearing, and I also was <laughs> diagnosed with ADD, so I think they just thought I wasn't paying attention, and it just missed the radar until one day, like when my mom was standing behind me on the couch, and she was like, Rachel, 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 you know. And I, I don't know that, but I remember her coming around me like crying, like, couldn't you hear me? Like, how distracted are you? And, real, and I was like, no. And then they were like, let's check her hearing. And then it was like a minor surgery fixed it. But for so much time, I couldn't hear. And I, I guess if I, if I have to answer, I think that from having a sense missing, it may have forced me to use other ways of awareness. You know, I know it's what made me a dancer. I know it's what made me fall in love with words because like I was like an early reader, even though I was like a great reader, like five was really young, but like I would like, I remember like sitting like trying to read shampoo bottles or any of you like that or like anything you could get your hands on with words and you'd try to read it. And I, you know, I think it's because I was like not hearing much. So I think that that altered perception may be what made me a mystic. Maybe, who knows? But I, I mean, do you think you're a mystic? No. I think you might be born one, you know what I mean, also. But I think, are you curious about the things you can't understand? No. See? So? That's cool. Yeah, no, it's safe. Safe. Yeah. I like to feel safe, too. Do you generally feel safe? Yeah? No. no. Me neither. I'm scared so much of the time. Life is so scary. I high five you for getting out of bed and like coming and like getting dressed and walking into a room. It's like a major effort. Some days, it's like all you can do, right? So I totally get hanging on to the noble. I guess it's like whatever helps you feel safe. For me, it helps me feel safe to think there's like another answer out there I just don't know yet and like maybe everything will make sense when I get there. Yeah. So it gives me hope, but like that answer is you know, when we're, we go to the next spot or whatever, whether we're rotting in the ground or we're playing a harp on a cloud or whatever it is. I don't think it's either of those. That's why I use those examples. You know, <laughs> then we get our answers. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that you're scared. I bet so many people here are scared too, but it's like scary to even admit it. I'm scared all the time. And I'm like legit like applauding you. Some days to just get out of the house and be around other humans is a supreme effort. Right? And it's getting weirder and worse because of technology, and then we get all isolated. Ugh. So, just for coming in the room, I celebrate you. Yeah. Is that a good answer? Did that answer it for you all? Yeah. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Lauren. Lauren. I'm Rachel. It's nice to meet you. My light sees your light. Do you believe there's stuff that we can't know or understand? Yeah. You're just not interested in it. No, I believe that there's yeah. stuff that you can't. You just don't got to muck around in it for you. You don't need to go digging around. I think you might be a mystic. Because respecting it that well is kind of mystical. We'll see. TBD. Let's revisit this topic in future years to see what happens. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me your name too. Hi, Rebecca. Do you practice with Vipassana meditation? So funny you should ask that. I did do Vipassana many, many years ago. Did I say something that like made you think that? Yes. What? <laughs> huh? Everything? Everything, yeah. Do you guys know about Vipassana? Did you do it? I did, yeah, I did. So I interesting. You're the first person to ever ask me that in a reading. No. Yeah. What? A lot of people have done Vipassana, but no one ever, like, 
No, yeah. There's not always Q and A's either, though. Maybe someone else is thinking it, but they didn't talk to me about it. But so Vipassana is a meditation technique that was taught by the Buddha, but it's not Buddhist. It's for everybody. And um, it's very intense. You go for like a week and you don't speak. It's like a silent meditation. It's all over the world because so many people have gotten healing from it. And the master who is now in the other realms, wherever they are, Goenkaji brought it to the world. You know, brought it back out from obscurity, basically. But it was the Buddha's technique. And I don't actually do it anymore. I did it, I, when I went, it was like 10 years ago. It was so powerful and so good for me. And I was also doing Reiki at the time. I was working as a Reiki master. And I started to get personally more involved in my Judaism. And it started to feel like I wanted to do things that were in that tradition, if I could find things that resonated, and I did. So now I do a Jewish meditation technique, and I do a Jewish energy healing technique that I learned from a master, from Yemen actually, not even from Israel. So, you know, like we all find our path. It's not like, I just want to say super clearly, it's not like I was rejecting those things or anything. I just was like learning about myself, and I found the alignment with me, and I was like, if I want to, if, if I want to work with these words, language, like the Hebrew language is so powerful. There's every every. I really think words are so powerful. Just like the literal letters on the page, all languages. There's power. You know, speak things into creation, right? There's thought, speech, action. So I just wanted to see what happened if I worked with my ancestral language. That was very divorced from me. Like my parents are super atheist, super intellectual raised that and for really awesome reasons you know and like really didn't want to put us into a patriarchal paradigm which you know abrahamic religions kind of are hard to deny it so i'm in a priestess ordination program so you find your way you know if you stay true to your path and it's like kind of lonely sometimes or you find your tribe eventually so yeah so that's how i found my journey i like my greatest areas of interest are like deep hardcore like rabbinic Torah and like drag so you know what I mean like I you just have to like kind of embrace the paradoxes of yourself sometimes you know what I mean but really it's like all this right it's like feel like a weirdo everybody's judging you guess what that's their crap you're freaking amazing love them anyway keep it moving uh, you can't really get more rabbinic or drag than that you know so to me it makes sense you know, and you'll find your, everyone finds their little, but yeah, the Vipassana is amazing. You do it every day? Uh, not every day, I'm still, uh, It's a lot, that's a big commitment. Yeah, it's I a big commitment. Retreat, but I oh, you haven't gone yet? Go. Because my teacher does, like, mindfulness meditation, but it's just Vipassana. But, so I was also curious then, how much influence... Oh yeah, she's had two questions. On your, your writing then. On Vipassana? From when you did Vipassana, to then when you switched over to um, the Judas. Yeah, but also just to be clear, I think everything I do has an influence on me. But it's not like I was like, oh, I was into Vipassana and then I was into Judaism. Mm -hmm. I was into Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, the Tao. Taoism is probably my favorite. I mean, it's a book of poems, guys. Like, mm -hmm. get into the Tao. It's amazing. It's, you know, I was into white magic. I was into anything I could get my hands on that seemed to like, I want to I wanna see the universe's slip. I want to peek under the universe's skirt. Everything's cool. I want to see what's going on. So I'm like looking everywhere since I was a little, like what's the, you know, and like a lot of stuff I, re I regret. Like I was like, I got into Ouija boards when I was very young, you know. I wish I had messed around with those. So, you know, you bump around a little if you're like a baby witch in a patriarchal culture that doesn't have room for this. But you know it's changing, right? You can feel that it's changing, right? Just like here, like if you guys here, there's some men in the room with us. How many of you men who are in the room are excited about shifting from a patriarchal model to maybe a more matriarchal model? Or Yeah, see, look around. So the men... Are st the, we're all on the same page and like I want I do that because people the women and other men and anyone wherever the heck they're on the gender spectrum who cares 
need to see that. That we're not like this. Actually, men are ready too. We all want a peaceful, non-competitive, like the change is happening. So I just encourage you all, whatever you are, to be out about it. Like I'm just publicly talking now about like that there's a shift happening and that we're moving from the linear to the spherical, like that stuff I say. Just come out about it. You heard, you heard out. Come out. Right? But I don't know if I answer your question. So everything influences my poetry. I mean the murmuration, have you guys seen the videos of murmuration? Oh gosh, please, really, like, I'm not just saying, like, Google it. It's so, you can't believe how beautiful. It's stunning. And it's like, how is it possible? And I'm not being poetic, like, literally, it, they, they're, the scientists are trying to figure out right now, like, how does it affect seven birds? They, like, literally communicate with the seven, something about the air they can feel, they don't know. They're working on it. But it's literally seven birds and then seven, seven, seven. So that is an inspiration from a meme on Facebook. It was just someone passing it around. You know what I mean? Like inspirations everywhere. You know the best inspiration? Deadlines. Yeah. Take a workshop, right? And then you have to. The best inspiration is the fear of shame and disappointing yourself and the other people around you in your workshop. Even for me, like I have to. It's it's like I think at first, I was like, oh, it's like tapping a vein. There's so much flowing. And there's it's hard to write. I have writing deadlines. I, I write for a website. And I publish every other week. And like, if I did it, I don't know. So do whatever you have to do to like, you have this class right now, whichever class you're in, or like make friends and like in this class and like make writing groups and keep meeting and like keep those deadlines. It's like arbitrary, especially when you're, it's not in school, no one's grading you, who cares? But the, you, the accountability of just the people you're engaged with, it will help. So that's my biggest inspiration is the fear of shame. <laughs> the fear of, of you know, n not being accountable, you know, disappointing myself and other people. It's like the only thing that works now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank you for um, being um, vocally loud and articulate. Because uh. I have a hard time hearing, but I could understand every word you said. Thank you and so I much. I really appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. As someone who also has hearing stuff, I super extra appreciate knowing that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Hey. I mean, we could still talk. Like, we, I guess we'll just not sit in this official, like, configuration. Maybe you'll want to buy a book or just, like, come say hi. I have a mailing list if you want to sign up for other fun events. Yeah, go ahead. No, but I'm so excited to check her out right now. I'm gonna look at her. That's Yela Yellen Hirsch. Um, yeah, Yela Yellen Hirsch, and she, yeah, her paintings are just amazing, and they, like, she's a linguist, and she incorporates the Hebrew language. She comes from the same town in Poland as my ancestors. My family's from Poland, too. Where are you guys from? Bialystok. Wow. This is, like, fun talk for me. Okay, let's go, so that could be free. Let's keep talking. I wanna talk about Bialystok more. My family's from like, um, like it's like more Litvish, like area. This is so fun, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Do you want to say anything at the end? You come up or anything, oh. or should I say bye or? Sure. So you can hang out. Sign Please hang out. Keep things. talking to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, eventually we'll we'll be here for a minute. Yeah. Those of you that are not in my class, obviously, thank you for coming. Stick around. Rachel will sign a book for you. Never. Yeah. Just have like to say hi to her. Those of you there in my class, it's around. You can't go anywhere yet. <laughs> but we will officially go on break, like uh, you know, like about you know, 15 minutes, and we'll return to the classroom on the other side of campus no later than um, three. Yeah. Hey, there's some time for signing books, break time, and block time. Can I say okay. one more thing? Oh, oh yeah, there's cupcakes. There's uh, cupcakes. Some, some cupcakes hey. out here. Oh yeah, yeah so, don't eat it near the art. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. If you, there are cupcakes over here and water, please help yourself. Um, the cupcakes, however, have to be eaten outside so we don't stain the walls or do anything like that. So Can I say one more thing really quick before Rachel, we oh, okay. super quick. I actually have a few copies of the book that are signed by the artist too. So even if you buy them from the store, I can trade them out and then you'll have if you want, because isn't she just 
we met in Zumba class. If you want to know the story, <laughs> ask me like, yeah, I'll tell you about it because we got, I, know, I need to let you go, but it's a fun story if you want to hear. Let's get Rachel on our hands. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for taking such good care of me. Aww. There was no parking in the lot, and where I was supposed to park, I'm sure you're familiar because you go to school here, and he like walked over to the structure to help me. So you have a very nice teacher. So, because I had to go to a plan C.